composting, the composting process. At this point, we have no idea the heat is not enough. Uh, there may be enough competition with microorganisms that they're digesting some of those prions, uh, but we don't know that. David or, or Elizabeth? Mike, I'll just add that uh, yeah. Euro European research shows that rendering reduces the infectivity by uh, two or three logs. That would be 100 to 1,000 times, but, but it doesn't absolutely uh, remove it. So uh, that's, that's one reason that, uh, that rendering is, uh, has been impacted. And, and the assumption is that, uh, that uh, feeding these prions, these defective prions, is, is the, uh, you know, the, the quickest and fastest way to spread infection. So they think that eliminating it from the feed is, is the best thing to do. And that, and that kind of brings up another question that, that you responded to, David, um, about um, about what FDA's jurisdiction is that actually over. Would you care to comment about well, that? Well, yeah, I mean, FDA's jurisdiction is over the feed, so they have, they have said that uh, that these materials can't go in the feed as of October, but uh, they they don't have jurisdiction over fertilizers. So, you know, these materials could be landfilled or could be uh, processed in the fertilizer as of now, but there are other regulatory bodies for fertilizer that, that may be taking a look at this. Okay. Another another question for Gene. I assume Gene might be the one to take this. There was a question about um, someone said they had heard a, an, a conflicting recommendation about lancing the rumen, and that um, uh, one recommendation said don't do that at all. Do you are you aware of any conflicting recommendations about that? Should it be lanced once? Should it be lanced multiple times? I am not uh, aware of any conflicting information on that. I think if, if it, there was a disease issue, we probably would be very careful about how we were doing that, uh, a disease that was airborne, that was, could be spread on the air. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's any problem with lancing the rumen or whatever. People have devised all kinds of devices, either shooting them or using a sharp knife or a teeth or a a rebar or something like that just to do it. But generally, it, I have not heard anything to the One of the questions also dealt with uh, getting rid of the, the, co the compost at the end. Um, can, you, can you spread it on, on fields for crop production and or what, what limitations are there? There are no regulations on that at this point. Um, what we suggest to just err on the cautious side is to not put it on human food consumption crops and where you're able to use it in areas where you'll be tilling the land. So okay. if, you're, if you're applying it and turning it over, then you should be okay because it's, prions are in the soil as well. There are lots of prions. We just don't think about prions in, in lots of different places. Mm -hmm. How about drum composters? Um, some people will use drum composters. They're really hard for large animals unless you're going to size reduce the animal. So if you want to chip the animal or quarter it or something like that, uh, it's probably a doable thing. But to put a whole animal in a drum, a whole large large, large livestock drum, would be difficult. They have been used for chickens. Um, they do, the first one was a cement mixer. And they do use some of those for chickens and some for pigs, small pigs. Another question: it, it, When making, when building the pile, how much of the um, carbonaceous material could be could be manure, could be bedding? Um, if it's a bedded pack or something that's pretty light material, then we can use that more of that for the base. If it's a dense manure or even a digestive manure, I wouldn't use too much on the base. I would use as much, you know, carbonaceous material as possible. And think outside of the box when you're thinking about carbon. I was in Montana speaking a couple of years ago, and they said, well, we don't have any wood chips. At the same time, all the forests were burning, and they had standing timber that needed to be removed from the woods, from, from the, the stands, and it could be chipped. So all they need to do is bring a chipper in. We also, in many places, we have a lot of waste wood that can be used. We have pallets all over the country because of the because of commerce. So there are lots of different materials that we do have as woody waste that could possibly be. This question for, for everybody, it's, it's for me. Um, what, for David and for, um, for Elizabeth, what kind of, 
what kind of, with this new rule, what kind of concerns do you have about it that, uh, you know, that, that uh, not so much that that's the, the rule's there, but what kind of things do you think producers might do to, what could be the bad outcomes of this rule? Well, we've been worried uh, about disposal because when uh, the costs go up for disposal or services are decreased, and that increases the likelihood of, you know, in a, inappropriate disposal, and and we see increased cases of, you know, dumping in uh, road ditches and things that are very inadvisable for uh, environmental reasons and animal health reasons both. So uh, uh, we just hope that people will investigate what, what alternatives they have and and not be tempted to. Uh, to uh, do things inappropriately. And I would only add to that, in, in certain states, there are no legal options now because of this rule. So we have producers who are keeping uh, carcasses on their land, but that's illegal. Um, mm -hmm. So we need, we need some solutions and, and need a collective effort to find those. Cal, it will increase the illegal dumping, and California made the news because of the illegally dumped calves. Um, it, we're going to see more and more of that with this ruling, and it keeps us all busy here. I'll tell you that. So we've got unwanted horses, now we've got un unwanted beef cattle, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, how about gasification as a, as a uh, method? That question just came in. Well, that's, uh, uh, I think there's been some research on, on, on raw organic material. So then you could use the meat and bone meal in a fluidized bed burner or something like that. None of this is is, is done, uh, you know, on any scale right now because uh, burning meat and bone meal for fuel is many times uh, less valuable, even at high fuel prices, than it is for animal feed. Uh -huh. David, for a for for a, let's say you have an, an older cow that's in your past, it's past 30 months of age, past um, however many hours uh, you have to pass, um, is there any option at all? There's no rendering option at all for that animal? Um, I, I, you, you, uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Mike. Well, uh, the, the, if you remove the brain and spinal cord, it can be rendered. Now, if it's too deteriorated to do that, you know, then, then, then the... If the renter has it already on his hands and, and he can't take it apart, well then, most likely he has a contract with a landfill or, or has a permit to compost. Or, you know, the renter also has to look into alternatives because there will be times when he can't finish the material. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But hopefully, uh, if they're in the business, they'll get them soon enough that they can process them. Okay. The, with uh, gasification, it's done on a very small scale at this point. And we will have demonstrations at the UC Davis Symposium, um, but it really is small scale, not very mobile, um, and it's hard to, uh, it, it really is, carcasses have a lot of moisture and it's hard to cook them, right. hard to cook them in that manner. Final, another final question to come in here. How about, uh, would a rule like this ever be reversed after some period of time? What's the possibility of a rule reversal after another five to eight years? Well, we, we've been told repeatedly that that uh, it's very, very unusual and difficult to get a reversal. But but I'm you know I'm hopeful because there is a there is a caveat in the rule that says countries that that uh, export to the United States that are negligible risk by the OIE don't have to follow this rule. So. I'm using logic to say when the U.S. in a, in hopefully in a, just a few years, sooner uh, as possible, becomes neg negligible risk because we just aren't finding any BSC in all the testing, that at that point uh, that, that the rule would apply to us as well as it does to Australia and, and Argentina, you know. Right. How about how about dairies? We haven't talked about dairy farms too much. Someone's just asked that question. How do they? Their situation get them well. D dairy farms, uh, uh, you know, that they, they're probably one of the largest sources of cattle over 30 months, and uh, I, I think uh, you know many of the intense dairy places like uh, like California, Wisconsin, have 
pretty decent rendering services, and I, and I believe uh, most of the renders that I've talked to in those areas are, are going to try very hard to, to continue the rendering services. How about Idaho or New Mexico? Um, might be a little Many harder the, harder there. Uh -huh. Many of the dairies are using the renderers when they're able to, um, but as they're losing service, they are composting, and we have pretty extensive composting going on in the Northeast, uh, Maine, Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia, West Virginia, New York. Uh, we're composting pretty extensively there, and anything that can go to rendering, we send that way. But a lot of people just don't have that option, and we have lots of dairy. Ohio is doing a lot of work on it. Utah is doing a certain amount of work on, work in composting. So there are lots of states that really are working a lot uh, to promote that as a, as an alternative. Uh, some links have come up in the chat box that uh, if you're online still, you might want to look at. Um, I think we're coming to the end of our time. Are there any final comments from any of our speakers or any questions they might have for, for one another? Clarifications or anything? We will be, uh, um, we will come up with responses to your question, I, uh, and I'll be in contact with the speakers if we have to, to, to get any further answers on any clarifications on any of the answers that were given. Um, with that, um, I think I think that finishes our our, uh, our webcast for today. Uh, the next one is scheduled for July 31st on the subject of uh, uh, carbon credits, carbon trading, and uh, carbon footprint, I guess. And um, so, please, um, we'll see you back at that time, and have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks.